The .NET platform provides great support for running .NET applications as Docker containers via the Docker images published by the .NET team. However, the way you build those images via Docker files has always been less than ideal because it does not take full advantage of the .NET build process. So today I'm going to show you the new way to build .NET Docker images without using any Docker file. Let's start. To demonstrate a new way to build Docker images for .NET applications, I have prepared a super simple REST API using the default Web API template that comes with the .NET SDK. And just keep in mind that what I'll show you today became available with version 7 of the .NET platform, so you'll need to install the .NET 7 SDK or greater. And in fact, let me show you the version that I'm using today. So here I am in Visual Studio Code with my project right there in with my terminal. And I'll just do .NET slash version. That's going to show you that the version I'm using is version 7.0.200. And if you take a quick look at what this project does, and if you just close this terminal and go into program CS for a moment, you're going to see that all it is is that uh, we have this one uh, weather forecast endpoint that we can invoke and it's going to return a random list of weather forecasts based on this list of summaries over there at the top, and then a set of dates, a set of uh, temperatures and something, some calculations in there. All right. And so really, really simple, nothing, uh, no rocket science going on here. Um, now, one thing that I did here is I did comment this line here, app use HTTPS redirection, just because we're not going to be using HTTPS uh, for this demo and to avoid uh, a set of warnings that could show up over there. Okay, and so let me show up my explorer over there. And then um, uh, let's go ahead and actually start the server. So I'm going to open my terminal here and let's switch to docker.api, which is the directory where I actually have the project uh, created. And I'm just going to do .NET run. So that's going to start the server. And um, that's going to show us where the API is running. It is running at localhost 5073. And how we're going to test it? Well, there's a few ways to, to test this API these days. Uh, but the way that I really like these days is uh, using this uh, REST client extension. It's an extension available in VS Code. Let me show you. If I open my extensions view, yeah, right there. Just look for REST client. You're going to find this extension, uh, REST client by Wen Chao Mao right here. Uh, it's a great extension, allows you to do all sorts of testing of APIs directly within VS Code, which is why I like it, right? So let me close that. Let's go back into hellodocker.api. And actually, let's go into this file that I have here, hellodocker.http. And uh, in this file, uh, what I can do thanks to that extension is to declare any of the APIs that I want to test. In this case, I'm, I'm declaring here a get request for the location of my server and at the location of my weather forecast API. All right, and let's make sure that my server is running. Yeah, it is running. Let me collapse this for a moment. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and click here on send request. And as you can see on the right side, we were able to retrieve the results of the invocation of that uh, API. So you can see we're getting a 200 OK, and we can see a random list of a uh, weather forecast. And so what we want to do now is to actually uh, turn this API into a Docker container, because of course we want to deploy this into some sort of a server, either in our local network or in the cloud uh, or even in Kubernetes. Uh, so Docker is the best way to take this uh, and get it deployed very quickly in, in the best possible way. So how do we turn this into a Docker container? Before I show you the new way to do this, let's let's just do it very quickly at, at, at the classic way of how you would do this via a Docker file. So let me just go ahead and close this and let me open my terminal to stop our server. Yeah, it's stopped right now. And then let's show the Explorer, right? So let's collapse this. And so the way that you would do this is, like I said, via a Docker file. So how do we generate a Docker file in Visual Studio Code? Very easily. Uh, if you have the Docker extension installed, by the way, let me show you that too. Just type Docker here. Are you going to find this extension uh, by the Docker team? Is the one that is going to allow or uh, enable all of the tooling that I'm going to show you right now, all right? And so all you have to do is just go to the command palette and you're going to say uh, Docker, add Docker files to workspace right there. So you're going to pick a platform. In our case, it is ASP.NET Core. Uh, we're going to create it for Linux because it's super fast. And then here's the port that has already been, been defined for our server. So it was, was able to recognize it. So that's good. And then we want to use a compose file, uh, Docker Compose. Uh, not really, no, not needed. All right. And so right away, Visual Studio Code scaffolded this uh, file here, uh, Docker file which is the one that describes exactly how we're going to be building our uh, Docker image for our application. 
right? And we're not going to go into all the details of this file, but just let's take a look at it very quickly just to understand what's going on here. Now, this file supports what is known as multi-stage builds in Docker. And so because of that, there are a few stages, right? So this, this first section over here from line one to 10 is the first stage. And the main thing about this stage is that we, here we're, we're deciding what is going to be the image on top of which we're going to be running our application. And as you can see at the very top, we are choosing to run uh, on top of the .NET ASP.NET 7.0 Docker image, which is going to make sure that we have all of the dependencies, all of the files, all of the configurations that are needed for any ASP.NET Core 7 application as it is R1, all right? So that's the main thing about this first stage. And then we go into the second stage down here, here from line 12 to 18. In this second stage, we are actually switching into another Docker image where we say, okay, so before we can run the Docker image, we have to build it, right? And to build it, we're going to go in from another image, which is a .NET SDK 7.0 uh, image. We have to switch to this other Docker image because this is the one that includes all of the build tooling so that you can build an application, not just run it, but build it, right? Which usually involves more files, right? It's a bit bigger, and uh, but it's the only one that allows us to have all the tooling required to build the application. So uh, all of this happening here is just copying files into the Docker image and then restoring dependencies and building stuff so that we end up with the actual uh, compiled application. Okay, and then we go from that stage, that build stage, as you can see in line 20 here, we go from that stage into another stage called publish. We're just renaming it as publish, right? And we are, all we're doing is just publishing the, the image in a shape that's ready for running it, right? To run the application, right? And it's going to end up in this app slash publish directory. And it's also going to be in the release mode, right? Because this is no longer, we don't need the box symbols. We need a, a release version of application here because this is for production. And then finally, we go into this last stage at the very end here, which actually starts from the base stage uh, over there, which is, is we're saying, okay, so let's go back into a, a, a stage where we can run the application, not build it, but just run it, which is going to be a smaller and leaner image, right? And let's, let's treat that image as our final uh, stage. That's say is, is our final stage. And then we're just going to be copying everything that we uh, created in the previous stage, in the publish stage, is going to be copied into the root directory of this image. And then we just go ahead and run the application via the DLL that was produced, right? So this is a Docker, uh, a Docker file that is able to both uh, build and run the application uh, as required. And so, well, how, how do we use it? How do we actually build uh, the image out of this? So let me actually go ahead and open up my terminal once again, and I'm going to clean this. And the way to build the Docker image, as you might know, is by just using the Docker build tooling, right? And so by the way, I do have a Docker desktop installed in this machine. So make sure that you get Docker desktop before doing anything like this, because otherwise it's not going to work. You need Docker desktop in your box. So I'm going to say Docker build, and then uh, you have to uh, specify the tag for this build, uh, which is composed of the name of the image and the actual tag. So I'm going to say dash t. Let's say I want to name this um, hello docker classic. Okay. And then for the tag, we're going to say that this is version 100, right? Just as simple as that. And then lastly, we're going to put a dot over here because this is the build context, right? So this, this defines uh, where is that we're going to be building things from. So I'm going to hit enter. And that should go ahead and build our Docker image. Now, however, as you can see here, we do have an error right here, right? He's saying, well, uh, I cannot really uh, copy the file. And in fact, if we look at it uh, down here, let's look at this entirely like that. Uh, you can see that, yeah, I mean, cannot find uh, the, the file, the csproc file. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a look uh, very quickly, we, we go into the Explorer view over here and we collapse this for a moment. Notice uh, that as we go through our Docker file, uh, the file and uh, the generated file is trying to copy from hello docker api hello docker api csproc into its own directory right uh, however uh, this is happening uh, from a docker file that is already inside the hello docker api directory right so when when the docker file tries to uh, to dive into a hello docker api directory uh, it gets confused because we are already in that directory right it should not be like this Right, so this this sentence here was a wrong generated. It would make more sense if the Docker file was at the very root of my uh, direct, VS Code directory here, and not inside the Hello Docker API directory. And this is one of those things that starts making you think if, if using a Docker file is really the, the best way to produce your Docker images. And of course, what you're going to do here is usually just move uh, move out uh, the Docker file. But another thing that you can do is actually fix it. So let's let's go ahead and fix it uh, very briefly because it's not not that hard. So what you want to do here is just modify this saying, well, you don't have to go into hello docker.api uh, directory, just uh, remove this 
like that, and then just copy the hello docker that API file that you're going to find right there next to the docker file. And also, this sentence here on line 16 is not going to work because it's going to, again, try to copy everything from the current directory, the hello docker API directory in my box into the SRC directory, which is the work there right now, right? Which is not going to make sense. It should be copying things into dot slash and this directory here, hello docker API, which is the one that it, uh, that it uh, where it copied the project file. Okay, so just by making this change here and this other change over there, we should be able to build this Docker image now, right? After fixing it. So let me collapse this now and let's go back into our terminal. Let's clean this and let's run the same sentence again, right? So Docker build, let's see how, how this goes. And as you can see, things are moving uh, forward nicely now. Okay, and what's happening here is, uh, of course, it is uh, Docker is downloading the image, the ASP.NET 7 image and the SDK 7 uh, image into my box, and then it builds the application using the stages that we talked about, right? And so at this point, if we just clean this and we say Docker images, we're going to see that we do have our Hello Docker Classic uh, version 100 image right there. And if you want it, we can go ahead now uh, and run the image. So to run that image, all we have to do is just say Docker run. And then we're going to do an interactive session just so that we can easily stop the application when we're done with it. We will do our M so that the container is removed after we uh, we are done with it. And then we have to specify also a port, right, to, to tell how is that we're going to access uh, the application that is running behind the scenes, right? And so in this, in this case, as you know, as we specified over here, the application is going to be running in port 5073 inside the Docker image, right? So what we have to do is to map whichever port we want uh, from our box uh, or host machine and into the Docker image. So in the Docker image, the port is going to be 5073. And then we have to decide what port to use uh, and, and the, in the outside, right? So we could put really any port, any valid port here, but just to keep things simple, we're going to be using the same port 5073, that the uh, process is, is using inside the Docker image, right? It doesn't have to be, but it just makes things a bit simple. And then we have to pick the name of the image to run. So that's going to be hello docker classic. And then the tag, which is 100. And that should be it. Let me go ahead and hit enter. And as you can see, we are now running uh, our Docker image uh, within our Docker container. And you can tell that because uh, as you can see here, we are now running in a production environment, right? And then you can see here, we're running in uh, in the in, in localhost 5073, right? And so just to confirm that things are working properly, what we can do now uh, is uh, uh, let's go to Explorer and let's open hello docker at HTTP once again, and let's go ahead and send requests. It should be the same port, so send request. And if we can see on the right side, we are able to retrieve the, uh, the weather forecast just as before, right? So the application is working properly. We are able to access the, the application that is now running in the Docker container, not in our box, but really in the Docker container. Okay, so that is great. And let's just close this and let's just stop this uh, for a moment. Now, uh, so that's that's working okay. I mean, it was not great that we had to modify the Docker file to start with. It should just work, but okay. So we modified things and it's fine. But now let's go ahead and introduce something else. So let's say that now we have a requirement to introduce uh, a brand new component to, in our application, right? And this is going to be a component um, super simple that's able to uh, track metrics for our application, right? And so this have to be this has to go into another project file. Right, so let's create that, that class uh, ve very quickly. It's going to be super simple, uh, but I want to show you one thing that happens when we, when we do that. So let me close the Docker file and let me open my terminal here and let's uh, jump up and then let's create a brand new project. So it's going to be .NET new. This is going to be a class library. And let's name this one hello docker.telemetry. All right, as you can see on the left side, we have our brand new hello docker that telemetry project created right there. And then we have this class one uh, class generated there, which we're going to rename actually into something else. It's going to be named metrics emitter. All right, that's going to be the class name. Let's put that class name over here. All right, this is going to be actually a static class uh, to keep things simple. And, and let me collapse this. This is going to have just one method. Let's call this method public static void count. Let's say that this method is the one that is going to be able to count uh, any metric that we specify. And the name of the metric is going to come here. So metric name, all right. And so uh, to keep things super simple, all we're going to do is just say console.writeLine. And then we're going to say 
counting metric and then uh, this is going to uh, let us pay, set a space for the actual metric name which is going to come as a parameter over here okay so super simple and just for fun let's just change the color of the console so that we can see better in, in our console so let's say console dot foreground color is going to be console color dot green okay and then uh, after we're done with this, we might as well uh, also reset the color. So let's just switch back the color into whatever it was before. And so as you can see, super simple method. All it does is just simulate that it's counting a metric. So now we want to use this method and this class in our uh, API project, right? And so let's show the Explorer once again. What we want to do now is to make, get a reference between uh, from the API project into our Telemetry project. So I'll open my terminal here. Let me switch into hello docker.api here and all we have to do now is just say .net add reference and then we're going to go into hello docker telemetry and hello docker telemetry cs pro all right so that adds the reference and with that we can now let me just uh, close this and let's go into program.cs Let's see, can we close this? Yeah, let's close that. And then move here. Now what we want to do now is just say, okay, so after we return the set of forecasts, what we want to do is just, uh, well, do the count, right? So in this line here, we're going to say metrics emitter dot, and of course we'll have to do control dot here to use hello docker dot telemetry, metrics emitter dot count. And then the metric name, let's say it's going to be weather, forecast requested okay that's all it is so that's our awesome metric so with this in place let's go ahead and test it let's make sure that we can actually count these metrics right so let me open my terminal once again and perhaps make it smaller yeah, like that and then let's just do dot net run once again all right it's running let's open up our hello docker.http file over there and let's go ahead and send a request and as you can see we can still get the uh let's make this a bit smaller actually like that we can still get the the word forecast but more importantly we are able to see the uh, the effect of our metric counter right there okay and i can make a uh, multiple requests as you can see and it will keep saying that yeah we're, we're counting the metric so this is working just fine as expected okay now let me close this and what we want to do now of course is to produce a brand new version of our Docker image that includes this new functionality, right? Because it's, it's the next version of our application. So just like we did before, we're going to run pretty much the same command, right? So it should be Docker, let's go back into Docker build, right? This is the command that we used before. And we should be able to just bump the version into version 101, saying this is the, the new version. And uh, yeah, and in fact, let me make this a bit bigger and let's go ahead and build this image and see uh, see how that goes. Okay, so yeah, so it's trying to build the, the image, uh, but this doesn't look quite right, right? So let's see, as you can see, there is some sort of an error going on over here, but we, will not, we were not able to run the build operation. And if we keep going down, we can see that the build actually failed. What else we got here? If we go up, we're going to see that, yeah, so look at this, skipping the project. Uh, it, it cannot use it because it cannot find hello docker that tell me the CS proc, right? And so if you think about it, well, that kind of makes sense uh, because if we go back into our Docker file, so let's open our Docker file over here. Notice that uh, we did copy our Hello Docker API CS proc, but we never copied the uh, Telemetry project, right? So if you go back into Explorer, uh, we never copied Hello Docker that Telemetry CS proc into the Docker image. So it doesn't know about it. And furthermore, it doesn't know about any of the files that are required to build the Telemetry project, which is a dependency of the Hello Docker API project, right? And so at that point, you have to start thinking, okay, so sure, I mean, I have to copy that. So perhaps if I, do something like this, I would be able to, they, okay, so hello, doc, hello docker dot telemetry, right? So I want to copy this into hello docker dot telemetry inside the, the, 
the Docker image. But then you have to realize that you're not in the context in the same context as Hello Docker telemetry, right? So now you are, I mean, you are in a directory inside Hello Docker API. You have to get out of Hello Docker API and then into Hello Docker telemetry. So perhaps something like this to get out and then go in, uh, but that's not going to work quite well because you have to always operate in the context of the in the Docker build context, right? So that's not going to be really, uh, really easy. Uh, there may be, I mean, there are ways to make it work. And usually what, what you would do at that point is just take your Docker file and, and take it out one level up, right, at the root. And then you start to start, uh, you need to start scaffolding new lines here to copy your other, like in this case, a telemetry project. And then also you will have to do something here in this line 17 to also copy all of the other files, right? And then set the proper work there. And you, you have to make a, a bunch of changes in this file uh, to make this work, right? And this is where the, and let me actually undo this thing here just to keep it there. Uh, this is where the whole story starts breaking up a little bit uh, because you have to make all these changes to accommodate the, the progress of your application as you start introducing more directories things are going to change and this Docker file can easily get out of sync with the structure of your application, right? And this has happened many times to me as we start making changes in there. And then it happens to be that when we go into the pipeline, the Docker image is completely broken, right? Because uh, we didn't realize that something had to change here. So this is where the new way of building Docker images can actually help. So let me show you how that works. And let me actually just close uh, all of this. What I want to do is just bring up my uh, uh, my Hello Docker API CSProc file first. So let's go into this file here. And in order to use this new way to build Docker images, the first thing that you have to do is to add a brand new uh, tag uh, over here, or a brand new element into this property group, uh, which is, is called enable SDK container support, right? So it's this one here, and in this tag, uh, and don't mind this, this one here is, is harmless. And so um, you want to say just here, true, okay? So just by doing this, and as you can see, there's a prompt here that says there are unresolved dependencies. This is going to bring in a few other dependencies uh, from the .NET SDK that is going to enable the ability to build Docker images directly by using the standard build process of, of .NET. So just by adding this one line, look at this. This is what we can do now. So I'll do, uh, I go into my terminal, over here, and I'm going to clean this. Oops, I'll make it bigger. Uh, what we can do now is just say .NET publish, and then you have to specify here what's going to be your uh, your operating system. So for, for which operating system you're going to publish or create this Docker image. Remember that we selected that in the wizard when we created the Docker file, you have to do the same thing here. So in this case, the, uh, the OS that you want to use is uh, Linux. And by the way, Linux is the only one supported at the time that I'm recording this video, I think. So there should be more options uh, later on. But for now, let's uh, stick with Linux. And then of course you want to go into the release version of the application because this is for production. And then lastly, you want to specify what is known as the publish profile. So publish profile. And then for this one, what you want to use here is default container. Okay. So that is the kind of the minimum line that, that you need to, uh, to write in order to create a Docker container or Docker image out of your uh, project. So just by doing that, let me hit enter here. What we're going to see is that now, uh, the .NET SDK produced an image right away uh, using uh, your project. And as you can see right here, uh, it selected uh, the version, version 7.0 of the ASP.NET uh, image, right? The .NET ASP.NET image, and it created an image named Hello Docker API, and it did rename .API by .API because it doesn't support uh, the dot for some reason, and used tag 100, and then it produced in the end this this image here, Hello Docker API colon 100. All right, and so I didn't have to write any Docker file at all for any of this uh, to happen. And in fact, let me to prove that. Let me just delete this Docker file here. Just get rid of that thing. It is gone, and I'm going to do this once again. And of course, this is going to be a bit faster because layers are already cached, but it worked just fine. And if I collapse this and I do now Docker images, you're going to see that now we do have our brand new image available right here. Okay, it's this one here. And so, yeah, I mean, by default, it is that easy to produce your image using zero Docker file, right? It's not needed at all. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you do need to have Docker Desktop uh, installed and running in your box to make this work. So it's not like you don't need Docker at all. So you do need to have Docker Desktop installed. So make sure you have that in there. But other than that, you don't need a Docker file anymore uh, for, for this. 
And so we could also just verify that this, this brand new created Docker image actually works. And so let's go back into our Docker run uh, syntax here. So let's see if this is the same. So it looks mostly the same. Uh, but there's going to be one change here, which is the fact that by default, uh, the port that's going to be used for your Docker image is now, is now going to be port 80, which is the default port that's included in the ASP.NET 7 uh, Docker image, right? So that's why I just changed this into 80, as you can see, port 80. Uh, there are ways to change that too, but by default, you're going to get that. Still, we're going to go from the outside port, the host port is going to be 5073, then mapped into port 80 inside the Docker image. And then the actual name of the image is no longer Hello Docker Classic, but it's going to be Hello Docker API, which is inherited from the name of the project, and then version 100. And so if I just hit enter, as you can see, we are running inside the Docker container, just like before. And if we go ahead and open our Hello Docker HTTP file over here, and we send a request, you're going to see that uh, it just works. Just like at any standard Docker container, things are working just like before. All right, and in fact, and you can see even the, the, the metric is being tracked right there, okay? And there was no need to be very picky about where our projects are located, how are the, the structure of the directory, that does not need it at all. As long as everything is, is laid out and connected properly in the MS build way, right, with the CS project files, uh, things should work as expected. Much more simpler than before. Okay, now I'll stop that, I'll close this. And then, well, there were a few assumptions about this, right? So let me clean this again and let's do Docker images once again. So how did it decide to create a, an image called hello docker api and with this tag, right? How did it decide on, this, on these things, right? So the, what it is doing is actually making a few, a few decisions by convention, right? Since it noticed that this is an ASP.NET Core project because of the project SDK that we're using here, and it is using version 7.0, uh, because of that, it is using the Docker image for ASP.NET 7, right? This just by convention is taking that. But if you wanted to override that, right? And you say, well, I don't want to use that, that as my base image, you want to use something else, you can always just come here and just say here, container base image, okay, just like that. And here you could type uh, any other image that makes sense for your .NET uh, application. And so here you could type something like mcr.microsoft.com and then .NET. And then let's say you want to go for the ASP.NET uh, 7.0 Alpine image, right? So dash Alpine. If it makes sense, then that's how you would declare that a uh, brand new uh, base image if you wanted to. Uh, I don't see a need uh, for this, uh, at least for this demo. So I'll just stick like that. And then the other thing is that, of course, it, it did generate this hello docker api name for the image, but you're going to say, well, I want to use a different name for my image. That doesn't make too much sense for me. So what you can do is the following. I mean, you can either uh, add another element over there or what will be more um, common, I think, is, is, is this. So docker publish, right? So same syntax as before, but we're going to add one more thing here, which is going to be dash p and then we're going to say container image name equals and then whatever name makes sense for you so let's say this is going to be hello docker dash modern right because the other one was classic this is going to be the modern version and so yeah let's do that and let's hit enter and what you're going to see is that just by doing that it will go ahead and generate our brand new hello docker modern uh, docker image Right, and if we do Docker images once again, we're going to see that we have that available right here. Okay, and so that's how, how you can overwrite the name of the image. And then, well, next question is going to be, well, what do we do about the tag? Right, I don't want to be producing tag 100 all the time. Right, and so there's a couple of ways to address this. Right, so by default, what it's doing is just taking the, the, the version of your assembly. So by, by default, any .NET assembly is going to take version 100. That's, that's the default, but you can override that in a couple of ways. Uh, first way is going to be by overriding the actual version directly in your in your project file. You can just say here, well, it's going to be version, version, and then let's close this. Let's say this is going to be version 100, uh, let's say 99. Okay, and so just by doing that, if we go ahead and run this command again, and let me actually clean this, let's run the .NET publish command again, you're going to see that now it is going to produce version uh, 1099, right? 
Uh, but I, wouldn't, I don't think that's going to be very common because usually the version is going to be somehow connected to your build process, right? So it's going to change depending on the new versions of the application that you're going to be producing, not necessarily modifying the assembly version, but because that can cause trouble. It's going to come usually from uh, some sort of uh, variable or environment variable in your build process in, or in your CI pipeline. So I wouldn't do it this way. The other way that you can do this, let me clean this, is by using another argument in your command line. So if you go back into our command line over here, uh, what we're going to do is just add one more thing, which is going to be dash p, and then we're going to say container image tag equals, and this is going to be version 101. And just by doing that, if I hit enter, you're going to see that we indeed get the version 101 of our uh, Docker image. Okay, if we can clean this and we say Docker images, uh, you're going to see that we have our brand new version right here, okay? Now from here, you may want to start simplifying a, a, a couple of things. And one of the things that you can simplify is this line here. It's just a bit too verbose. And uh, you got to realize that some of these things you can start adding directly to the file. So for instance, this Polish profile default container, instead of having to type that every time, what you can do is just come into your project file and you can just say here, Polish profile. Okay, so just like that, Polish profile. And then here you want to type what you're putting right now into your command line is just going to be default container. I'll copy that, paste it here. And by doing that, let me clean this, you can simplify this line by removing this parameter here, right? So now you don't have to do that. It's just like that. Hit enter, and that's going to have pretty much the same result as before. Okay, so that's great. And then comes the question of, okay, so if I can build and run my Docker image locally, how do I, uh, or what kind of support is, is built in for publishing this image into an actual container registry, right? So as you know, you're going to take this image either into a public place like Docker Hub or into your private container registry, like uh, for instance, the Azure container registry, right? So luckily there, there is built in support for that already. And let me show you how that works. So let me first show you very briefly my, Azure portal over here, where I have already defined this uh, container registry, hello Docker 01. And uh, if we go in, back into repositories down here, you're going to see that right now I have nothing. So this is completely empty, right? So how can we take our image and publish it right here? So let's get back to VS Code over here. And really all you have to do is just introduce a brand new tag here uh, that is called container registry, okay? So container registry, and then this is going to need to have the name of your registry, right? And so if you go back into the Azure portal briefly, here we go into overview, you're going to see that uh, here's our login server right here. So hello docker onecrio So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste that over here. Okay, so this is going to, going to enable uh, the Docker publish command to be able to not just publish the image into your box, but just push it directly into the container registry. Now, there's one more thing that you have to, of course, do here, uh, and it is the authentication into the registry. So that's something that the, the Docker, the .NET publish command cannot do for you. You do need to authenticate first to the registry, and it will also depend on what kind of register you're using behind the scenes. But in this case, what we want to do is, and let me expand this a bit more, and perhaps, yeah, just have it like that. What you want to do is, uh, well, this is Azure. So first thing that I have to do is do AC, AC login. And of course, for this, what you want to have is the uh, Azure CLI installed in your box. So I have Azure CLI. So I'm going to log in as my account right there. There we are. Okay, so we are logged in. So login completed. And now that I did that, uh, next thing that I have to do is to uh, log in. I mean, that locked me into my Azure subscription. Now I have to log in into the registry itself. So for that, I'm going to do ACACR login. And then it has to provide the name of the container registry. So the name is hello docker01. So I'm just going to copy that here. And then we want to, there are a few ways to authenticate against the registry, but the only supported way right now at the time that I'm recording this is uh, the one that uses the username and password, right? And so for that, let's go back into our registry over here. And if we go into access keys, I have already enabled, you see this option here, admin user, this option right here. Uh, uh, by default, it is disabled. So you just have to go ahead and enable it. And uh, by doing that, you do get a, both a, a username and a set of pass passwords that you can use to authenticate to your registry. And so let's use that. So let's copy the username first. So username, 
we'll say dash u username and then dash p for password back into the portal we're just going to go ahead and copy and copy the first password here paste it here and then hit enter and that should go ahead and log me into the registry and as you can see login succeeded so we are pretty much ready to go ahead and publish into acr so let's go ahead and clean this and let's run the same command that we uh, ran before right so dot uh, publish with the linux os release version uh and version 101 um uh, yeah let's go ahead and hit enter and what you should see now is that it not just uh, builds the image in my box using the, the using the .NET tooling, but it's also uploading now all of the layers of my Docker image into the remote Azure container registry. And this may take a while, depending on the size of your image, of course, uh, and I might speed up the video a little bit over here, but uh, but yeah, this is going to take all of your the layers of your container image until it is, it is completely uploaded into the container registry. All right, so the image has completed uh, uploading, so it should be available now in the registry. So let's just confirm that very quickly by going back to the portal. Here we are back in the portal. And if we go into repositories now, uh, we're going to see that here is our hello docker that modern repository that corresponds to the docker image. We click on that. We're going to see that we do have version 101 of our image published right there. Okay, so it was that easy to go ahead and publish the image into the remote registry after doing the required authentication. And then finally, one more thing that we can do here is just to verify that we can actually run, uh, I mean, pull down and run the Docker image or a container based on this image that is living now in the remote repository, right? So how to do that? Well, let me just go back into VS Code over here. And what we're going to do is to first, uh, let's go ahead and actually just get rid of every single image in my box just to simulate that this is a brand new machine, right? And we're not using any cached layers. And to do that, I'm going to do the following. So let me just clean this. And I'm going to uh, actually cheat a little bit here by copying this command uh, right there. This is a command that is able to just delete every single image in your box. So I'm going to just run that. And yet that gets rid of everything that is in my box. And so as you will be able to see, if I do Docker images now, uh, there's nothing in my box, right? So it's, it's all empty. And let's also make sure that there's uh, nothing really being cached here. So I'm going to just do docker system prune. All right, so that's going to get rid of every single layer that might be cached in my box and it reclaimed a little bit of space. So there's really nothing, nothing Docker related in my box at this point, right? So now we can go ahead and run that uh, Docker image uh, from the container registry. So let's go ahead and uh, use that command that we used before. So let's see, docker run. Yeah, so this is the, the command that we used before, but this time we have to add the name of the login server. This one over here. We'll add the login server. It's a prefix to the uh, to the actual uh, Docker image. And then remember that the image is not named API, but it's named modern, so dash modern. And the version that we use is version 101, right? So now we're going to try to pull down and run the image directly from that remote container register. So let's see if that works, hit enter. And as you can see, now we're downloading all of the layers for, the, for this image from the container registry directly. So this could be either my box or any other box anywhere in the world, right, that has access to internet and that is able to, of course, to authenticate to Azure first uh, before uh, being able to download the image as I'm doing right now. And as you can see, uh, it is up and running, right, with the same parameters that we used before. And if we go into Hello Docker at HTTP, we should be able to go ahead and hit send request. And just as before, we are able to get our list of weather forecasts just fine. And yeah, of course, the metric is also being counted uh, down here, as you can see. So yeah, so that's really what I wanted to show you today. I think this is this is great. And if you want to learn a little bit more about this new capability of .NET, uh, check out this page over here, over here, github.com slash .NET slash SDK container builds. This one right here. Uh, this is the page where this kind of a project is being developed, right? And so this is going to give you all the information about uh, how to use this new capability. You can go into the documentation right here, and this is going to give you a bunch of uh, getting started and ways to customize further uh, your uh, your container with a bunch of other capabilities that, that you can use uh, with this. 
I hope that was useful, and if you'd like to know more about using Docker to deploy your .NET applications to the cloud, please check out my site for complete courses where I cover that and many other topics essential for professional .NET developers. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you're the first to know whenever I publish new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.